Welcome to Module 16 that covers special provisions for the CACFP at-risk program. This program offers federal funding to after-school programs serving meals or snacks to children in low-income areas. The information can be found in Appendix D of the CACFP Administrative Manual. This lesson will outline the requirements for participation in the program. To be eligible to participate in the at-risk program, the site must be located in the attendance area of a public elementary, middle, or high school where at least 50% of the students are eligible for free or reduced price meals under the National School Lunch Program. This is referred to as area eligibility. District-wide data cannot be used. A site's area eligibility determination made under CACFP is valid for five years. Programs must provide educational or enrichment activities in an organized, structured, and supervised environment. Examples of eligible activities include arts and crafts, homework assistance, life skills, remedial education, and organized fitness activities. Programs that offer athletics only are not eligible. Organizations should contact the state agency to determine if the activities offered meet requirements. Additional information on program eligibility is in the USDA At-Risk After School Meals Program Handbook. CACFP at-risk program meals and snacks may be claimed for reimbursement during the school year only. Documentation must be submitted that state or local health and safety standards have been met. If not licensed by the Department of Human Services, documentation is usually a fire inspection and food service inspection for the site that prepares the food. Meals must be served pre-plated, family style, or in a serving line. All staff with CACFP responsibility, including those who serve or supervise meals and snacks, must receive training before they begin their duties and at least annually. Staff members who conduct monitoring reviews must also be trained. Document CACFP training on a sign-in sheet that includes the trainer, date, location, topics presented, duration, and names of participants. Keep all training documentation on file. To ensure requirements are met, someone must oversee daily CACFP meal service and record-keeping procedures. Organizations must conduct their own CACFP self-monitoring reviews to evaluate compliance. Site reviews are critical to the effective operation of the program. Any problems identified must be promptly corrected. An at-risk program review form can be found in Appendix D and in download forms. Independent centers must conduct at least one monitoring review per year. For center sponsors, the number of reviews required depends on the number of claims submitted annually by the site. Monitoring requirements are covered in Module 14 and Appendix B of the CACFP Manual. Organizations must receive state agency approval for meals consumed off-site, such as field trips. A CACFP field trip approval request form can be found in Appendix D. Next, we will discuss the CACFP records that must be kept. Daily attendance records are required. Record attendance each day using the form in the manual or a similar form. The number of meals claimed cannot exceed the total attendance for that day. Use a separate form to record daily meal counts to document the number of children who received a meal or snack. Record the number of meals by type served to adults performing food service labor. Keep these records separate from child meal count records. Adult meals cannot be claimed for reimbursement. Record the total number of meals and snacks delivered or prepared. Maintain daily dated menus for each at-risk meal or snack to document compliance with the meal pattern. The meal pattern chart for children ages 13 to 18 can be found in Appendix D. The meal pattern lists minimum serving sizes that must be provided. Larger portions may be served according to the participant's needs. An at-risk sample cycle menu in blank menu form can also be found in Appendix D. 
Keep financial records to document operation of a nonprofit food service, including invoices, receipts, labor logs, and other records as required. Documentation for all food service and administrative costs reported on the monthly CACFP cost claim details must be on file. There are significant differences between requirements for at-risk programs and most other child care programs. At-risk programs do not have to be licensed by the Department of Human Services, but may be licensed. Enrollment forms are not required unless licensed by DHS. Free and reduced price eligibility applications, food production records, and point-of-service meal counts are not required. While not required, it is best practice to record meal counts at the point of service to ensure an accurate count. Offer versus serve is an option in at-risk programs. This means enrolled participants have the choice to decline certain foods at each meal. At breakfast, three required components plus one additional creditable food item must be offered for a total of four different food items. One item may be declined, meaning the participant must take three items. At lunch and supper, five components must be offered. Two components may be declined. The child must receive three components. All components must be served at snack and none may be declined. Instructions or signs must be available to let supervisors and participants know what choices make up a reimbursable meal. All components must be pre-portioned and someone must supervise to ensure that participants receive the required number of components and that meal participation is correctly recorded. The organization must inform the state agency on the Iowa CNP site application if they will be using Offer versus Serve. Another special provision of the at-risk program is that all meals are claimed at the free rate without income applications. School-aged children through 18 years may be claimed and through 19 if the child turns 19 during the school year. Participants of any age with disabilities may be claimed. Only one meal and one snack may be claimed per child per day. Meals and snacks may be served only after school when school is in session. An exception to this may be made for a school operating at least one hour longer than the traditional day. In that scenario, the meal or snack can be served at the time a normal day would end. Any one meal and snack may be claimed on weekends and holidays during the school year or during unanticipated school closures. These meals and snacks can be served at any time during the day. Share tables are allowed in at-risk programs to minimize waste. Children may return whole food or unopened beverage items they choose not to eat as long as local and state health and food safety codes are followed. Food or beverage items left on the share table may be served and claimed for reimbursement during another meal service if the proper temperature and time guidelines are maintained. Leftover items may also be donated to a nonprofit organization. Prior to implementation of a share table, be sure to discuss with your local health department or state agency prior to implementation. For further information about share table requirements and best practices, refer to Appendix D. Children may take one vegetable, fruit, or grain item from their own meal or snack or from a share table to eat off-site at a later time. This concludes the lesson on at-risk programs. If you have questions, contact the state agency or your area consultant. Contact information can be found in the front of the CACFP Administrative Manual.